Did you ever wonder how the bloodiest war in American history began? The Civil War, a conflict that tore the nation apart, started on a seemingly ordinary day, April 12, 1861. In the years leading up to that fateful day, tensions were mounting between the North and the South. The North was industrializing rapidly, while the South clung to an agrarian lifestyle heavily dependent on slavery. The issue of slavery was more than a moral debate. It was a question of economic survival for many Southerners. The North, on the other hand, saw the institution of slavery as a blight on the democratic ideals that the nation was founded upon. They believed that every man should have the right to earn his own living, and that no one should profit from the forced labor of others. This deep-seated disagreement led to a chasm that widened with each passing year, each new piece of legislation, and each heated debate. The election of Abraham Lincoln in November of 1860, a man known for his anti-slavery stance, was the breaking point. Southern states felt their way of life was under threat and began to secede from the Union, one after another. By February of 1861, seven Southern states had seceded and the Confederate States of America was formed. This new nation was headed by President Jefferson Davis, who was determined to protect the Southern way of life at all costs. Although the Confederacy declared itself a separate nation, the Union did not recognize its legitimacy. The stage was set for a showdown, with the South determined to defend its sovereignty and the North equally resolved to preserve the Union. As the sun set on April 11, 1861, America was on the brink of war. The fuse was lit and the explosion was imminent. Dawn broke on April 12, 1861, bringing with it the thunderous sound of cannon fire. The Civil War had begun. As the first light of day crept over the horizon, a chilling scene unfolded at Fort Sumter, South Carolina. The fort, a symbol of federal authority, found itself under siege by Confederate forces. The air was thick with tension and the scent of gunpowder as the Confederate batteries unleashed a barrage of artillery shells that lit up the morning sky. The Confederate forces, under the command of General Pierre G. T. Beauregard, had been given orders to seize the fort, thus asserting their claim over the South. They had hoped that their show of force would compel the Union garrison to surrender, but Major Robert Anderson, the Union commander at Fort Sumter, had other ideas. Despite being heavily outnumbered and facing a formidable bombardment, Anderson chose to hold his fire. He waited as the Confederate cannons roared and the shells whistled through the air. The Union men inside the fort were under strict orders not to return fire unless given the command. It was a tense and daunting wait, but they held their ground, their resolve unwavering. And then, as the sun began to rise, Bathing the fort in a hazy, golden light, the orders finally came. The Union garrison, their cannons silent no more, returned fire. The sound was deafening, the impact tremendous. Each shot that they fired was not just a response to the Confederate attack, but a powerful declaration of their intent to stand their ground and fight for the Union. This was no longer just a political dispute, it was a battle for the soul of a nation. The first shot fired by the Union marked a significant turning point. It was a signal that the North was ready to fight, to shed blood if necessary to preserve the Union, and with that shot, any hopes for a peaceful resolution to the conflict evaporated into the smoke-filled air. With the daylight illuminating the smoke-filled sky, the Union garrison returned fire, signaling the start of a brutal and bloody war. As the sun climbed higher, the battle raged on. The first day of the Civil War was a day of chaos and confusion. That fateful morning of April 12, 1861, the Union and Confederate forces found themselves locked in a struggle of will and determination. The Confederacy, under President Jefferson Davis, had made the first aggressive move, signaling the start of the war. They had hoped for a swift victory, but the Union, led by President Abraham Lincoln, was not so easily defeated. Throughout the day, strategic decisions were made on both sides of the battle. The Confederates, under the command of General P.G.T. Beauregard, aimed to seize Fort Sumter and strengthen their hold on the South. Meanwhile, the Union, 
led by Major Robert Anderson, stood their ground, refusing to surrender the fort without a fight. In the midst of the conflict, there were unsuccessful attempts at negotiation. Both sides were firm in their beliefs and neither was willing to back down. The Union held on to hope of preserving the nation, while the Confederacy was determined to establish a separate entity where their way of life could be maintained. The battle raged on, the sounds of cannon fire echoing across the harbor. The Union troops, outnumbered and outgunned, fought valiantly, but were eventually forced to surrender Fort Sumter to the Confederacy. It was a bitter defeat, but it marked just the beginning of a long and bloody conflict. The day was filled with the thunderous noise of battle, the cries of men, and the grim reality of a nation divided. The air was thick with tension and uncertainty, the smell of gunpowder and fear permeating the scene. As the sun set on the first day of the Civil War, the reality of the situation began to sink in. America was at war with itself. The first day had ended, but the war was far from over. The events of that day were a grim foreshadowing of the trials and tribulations that lay ahead in the coming years. The first day of the Civil War set the tone for the conflict that would last four long years. This was not just a battle. It was a clash of ideologies, of cultures, of ways of life. The North and the South, once united, found themselves on opposite sides of a divide that had been growing for years. The first day saw a mix of anticipation, confusion, and fear. The North was taken aback by the ferocity of the Southern Rebellion, while the South was filled with a sense of grim determination. Both sides believed in their cause, and both were ready to fight for it. As the day wore on, the reality of the situation began to sink in. This was not going to be a quick skirmish, a simple disagreement to be resolved. No, this was a full-scale war, a battle for the soul of the nation. The first day of the Civil War was a wake-up call for everyone involved. In the North, there was shock and disbelief. How had things escalated so quickly? How had their southern neighbors, their fellow countrymen, turned to armed rebellion? In the South, there was a sense of grim satisfaction. They had made their stand, shown their resolve, but there was also fear. What would the North's response be? How far would this conflict go? These questions hung in the air as the first day of the Civil War came to a close. The battles had been fought, the first shots fired, the first lives lost. The United States was at war with itself, and no one knew what the future would hold. The first day of the Civil War was a day of shattered illusions and harsh realities. It was the beginning of a conflict that would forever change the United States. This was not just a war. It was a turning point in American history, a moment that would define the nation for generations to come.